and welcome to the Social Media Art Conversation. Today we're talking about how to get a fresh perspective to improve your art and work on your art style. This can be a good video to get new ideas to create, to improve art you're already working on, or to further your work as an artist and build up your style. The first tip is to consider why are you making your art? If you're facing artist block, a great first tip is to ask yourself why are you making your art? What's your goal with it? What purpose do you have for creating this artwork? Ask yourself questions like these to help give you a sense of direction. Are you trying to just improve your art skills? Are you trying to create something that's like really aesthetically pleasing or beautiful? Are you trying to communicate an idea? How are you gonna do that? And what elements of art do you appreciate or do you wanna consider? I love looking at the elements of art as a list. Sometimes just like focusing on one element of art can make me think about where I want to improve. Are you trying to improve your form, the shape? Are you like something I'm working on a lot is value in art. So trying to clearly distinguish which colors are darker and which ones are lighter. That's a skill that I'm working on. So that's part of my purpose with my artwork. And think about where you want to go with this. It can be a challenge to find authentic answers to questions about the purpose of your artwork. And it will really help your time spent on your art, um, a meaning and a focus if you are considering why you're doing it. Second tip to get over um, artist block and to get some fresh perspective for your art style is to look at other people's art and get their ideas and integrate them into your own artwork. Something I love to do is watch art videos on YouTube because I like to see the way that other artists build up their designs and the way they progress through an artwork. It kind of gives me a new perspective on my own art when I can see how other people are doing it. Something that can really help you when you're looking at other artists is to go through different websites on social media. So like for me, I really enjoy going on Instagram and Reddit. And I find just any works that I really admire because they have created a unique style or they are using imagery that's really evoking of a story. And I kind of use the ideas that I get from other people's art and focus it and expand it into my own artwork. Some great questions when you're looking at other people's art that you admire are asking yourself, what do you like about this art in particular? Do they use elements of art in a unique way? Is their subject startling or intriguing to you? Do they have a consistent style or aesthetic? When you're looking at those things in particular, then you can kind of take the things that you like and build it into your own ideas and own skills and plan for it in your own art pieces. Something important to remember when you're looking at other people's art is to not get negative about your own art. It's really easy to say, this person is doing an amazing job, I'm never gonna get there, and that's not true. Yeah, everybody started somewhere. You can't compare yourself to someone else. Everyone's on their own journey in art. You gotta think about your own journey and where you wanna go and just don't fall into that negative space where you compare yourself to others. You should only compare yourself to your past self. Next tip, a way to overcome getting stuck on ideas is to go backwards with your art. So think about art that you've done before and what did you like about it and what did you not like about it? Would you change something or do something differently next time? I really find that focusing on the problems of my previous artwork make me more self-reflective. For example, there's some paintings I've done where I've taken great time and detail on like the eyes of a portrait, but I skip over adding detail to the hair and it just ends up looking kind of unrealistic and like cartoonish. So something I want to work on for next time is to spend more time focusing on that part so that the whole piece comes together with more cohesion and it looks more professional. You can go through your past art pieces and find new inspiration through them. So what did you like about some of your other artwork? And you can build off of it for next time. It also might take you in a new direction. Like if you are looking at your old art and you notice that you do a lot of pencil sketches, maybe 
next time you want to do something similar but challenge yourself to a unique medium or something different like buying out that same pencil sketch aspects of it but doing it in marker or in pen or trying to sculpt it. All right, next tip. If you are facing artist block and you need a fresh perspective, it's always great to take a break. Your break could include going to go get a snack, watch TV. I often have it where I'm painting something, but I can't figure out what the problem is and I don't know what my next step should be. What happens in that case is I go take a break and then I come back and I see my painting again from a fresh perspective. I always get some new ideas after spending time amongst people or just looking through the shelves of an art store. If you're creating some artwork and you're finding that it's not looking how you want it to, a great way to improve is to get a real life reference of the thing that you're creating. So for example, when I was sculpting this goldfish that I really like. I watched a live stream for like 10 hours while I was sculpting this goldfish because then I could see the shape of the body in motion and come up with the shape of the character I was making based off of a real life reference. I've heard people online, they always say it's best to have a real life reference, which I think is true because then you can see how things move and shape. But there's no problem in getting just photo references from a free image website. And there's lots of like free stock photo websites. I notice a lot of people actually use those for portrait work because it's really great if you want to create a portrait of someone who is like anonymous kind of. You're not like making a picture of a celebrity. You're just doing a portrait of someone who has uploaded their portraits onto a stock image site for free. So those are really great um, tools to use. I even just use Google image searches, especially whenever I'm making something like this picture of a cow or whatever. And because then instead of trying to visualize what is in your head and put that onto a paper or into your art, your brain has to remember the shapes and values, but it does that kind of inaccurately. So if you have a visual reference to look at, you can make your art look more accurate by copying the, uh, the shape and the value and form from the real image rather than what's just in your head. Along the same lines as looking for photo references is to use Photoshop and photo editing tricks to improve your artwork. For me, I love to mirror pictures or rotate them. As you can see in this short video, I rotated a picture on my computer and then I started painting it upside down. This really helped me to see what proportions I was getting incorrect because when you're looking at a face the right side up, you see it as a face, but when you turn it upside down, you're more easily able to see it as lines and, and the darkness and the contrast. That will help you to paint more realistically if that's what your goal is. Um, something else I love to use as a photo editing trick is change an image into black and white and edit the brightness and contrast so that it's more apparent to me when I'm painting. And then something else that's really cool too is to use a photo editing program to invert the colors. So for example, I was painting this skyline recently and using some knowledge of like the color wheel and complementary colors and color opposites, I was able to more accurately understand what color we're going to be in the painting from looking at their opposites. So one of my last tips we've got here is to cheat. If you are working on your art and you're having a lot of trouble with something, it's okay to cheat it. For example, when I'm drawing portraits, sometimes I trace the proportions because the proportions are not what I'm on right now in my art. I'm working on understanding value and color. This goes back to their, their first tip about understanding what your motivation is in art. Right now, my motivation is to understand value and it helps me feel like I'm doing a better job in my art or at least like reassures me that I don't need to worry about proportions if I trace them ahead of time. You shouldn't feel ashamed of using what I'm calling a cheat in your art because 
it's okay. You're still improving. You're still coming up with art that makes you inspired and feel creative. You can use any creative tricks you find online. Don't be afraid to try something as long as you're making it your own. If you need to use a crutch every now and then in the form of some kind of art cheat, go for it. All right, last tip for today is to just keep practicing. So even if you're hitting some kind of wall in your artist block or you're struggling to come up with a style, just keep focused on creating art. Something I'm recently working on is a sketch a day project where I'm kind of documenting each day through an ink to sketch. And that kind of keeps my ideas fresh and going each day to start off the day with a new sketch okay if you're not making something that's like exciting every time that you do artwork sometimes you just need to put pencil to paper and see where it takes you and maybe you'll get some new inspiration all right that's all for today's video i hope you found some tips that were helpful to you if you have any other ideas or help to get a fresh perspective in in your artwork or to build up your art style please comment them below all right, I appreciate you guys and all the best. Take care.